Hello everyone, this is Jason for Primetime Aquatics and in this video I wanted to answer a question that's been asked a lot and that is what are the pros and cons of canister filters? We're going to tackle that question in this video. Hope you enjoy it. Alright, so what are the pros and cons of canister filters? Let's start with the really cool things. I think one of the reasons why people buy canister filters is often they are seen as the absolute pinnacle of filtration, at least in terms of what you can easily buy at a store. And often canister filters are purchased by people who have larger tanks. Why is that? I think one reason is the potential for the canister filter to hold a lot of media. I think the second reason is the canister filter can also provide a decent amount of flow, especially important for some of those larger fish tanks. Okay, so yes, it is true. A definite pro of a canister filter is it does hold a lot of media. That media can take many forms. It can be biological media, maybe like ceramic rings. It can also be involved in mechanical filtration like filter sponges and filter floss. And it does hold a lot of media. So that is definitely a pro. I think the second thing, again, would be what's really cool is you can put the return and the intake on potentially separate sides of your fish tank, which means you're getting a lot of good water flow. Unlike some other types of filtration where the, in, where the return and the intake are very close together, with a canister filter, they can be separated. And so maybe we're getting a little bit better job of mechanical filtration with our canister filters. I think another big advantage is the fact that you generally don't hear them. They are relatively quiet compared to other types of filtration. So if you have a centerpiece show tank in a living room or a bedroom or someplace public and you don't want to hear your filters running, a canister filter can be a really good option for that. Yet another great reason to have a canister filter is you don't see a lot of the filtration in or around the tank. A canister filter can be easily hidden under a tank and the only thing you're going to really see inside the tank is possibly an intake and a return and that's about it. Now when you look around our fish room we have 80 tanks and we run one canister filter and that is on the 50 gallon low boy behind me and we recently even removed that one. Why? Well there are some downsides to canister filters and sometimes this gets a little bit on the personal level and so for us we have 80 tanks, it just doesn't make economical sense to run canister filters even on our larger tanks like our 125s or our 150. We have a central air pump, we pump air throughout all the fish room and that runs primarily sponge filters. And when we do need a little bit of extra mechanical filtration, putting a hang on back filter on the back of the tank makes a lot of sense. By the way, if you want more information on comparing hang on back filters and canister filters, I will put that video in the upper right hand corner as well as in the description below. It will give you a lot more information on the comparisons between the two. And in fact, we've done a lot of filtration comparisons that I'll put in the description below as well. Okay, so one reason is just the economics. The second reason, and that is the expense. Again, with so many tanks, it just doesn't make a lot of financial sense to put canister filters even on our larger tanks. One of the downsides of a canister filter is they're going to be some of the more expensive fish filters, tank filters that you're going to encounter. Some of them can run to $300, maybe even a little bit more. Another downside to a canister filter, and I think this is the biggest one for me personally, and that is the maintenance aspect. It is the most difficult fish tank filter to maintain, in my opinion. We run primarily sponge filters, have a few hang on backs. The sponge filters and the hang on back filters can be maintenance in seconds. A canister filter like the one we had on our 50 gallon low boy, which was just a Sun Sun 702, it wasn't something extravagant, but now we're looking at five to 10 minutes. You gotta pull the thing out, you gotta disconnect the hoses, bring it over to a sink, get all the media out, rinse the thing out, put it all back together. That is something I dread personally. I just don't like it. I've run even smaller canister filters where they kind of just hang, they're like hang on the back canister filters and even with the smaller ones I absolutely dreaded cleaning them and therefore I did what a lot of human beings will do and that is I simply didn't like to clean them so I didn't clean them as often and once you stop cleaning your canister filters they become a whole lot less useful. As good as they can be in some aspects if they're not properly maintained they really don't do the job they're supposed to do. And so with the 50 gallon low boy, it got to the point where I just stopped cleaning it, hadn't cleaned it in months, it basically wasn't running. That fish tank was running, for the most part, almost a filterless tank. It just has an air stone, and that was about it. The tank was thriving, 
but the canister filter was in bad shape. So when I finally took it apart, it was a mess. I decided why I'm not dealing with this again. So instead I put a small internal canister filter on that tank along with the air stone and we're just going to let it run that way. So maintenance is definitely a big time con compared to the other types of fish tank filtration out there. Another aspect to look at, and I don't necessarily know if this is a con, but all that extra volume that a lot of people think they need in a canister filter really just isn't so a lot of the time, especially when it comes to biological filtration. Something that we talked about in this video here, how much filtration do you actually need? I think most people dramatically overfilter their tanks as it pertains to biological filtration because the surfaces of the inside of your tank, as long as there's enough water flow and oxygen, the surfaces house beneficial bacteria that is accomplishing the nitrogen cycle or the nitrification process, ammonia to nitrite, nitrite to nitrate. The vast majority of filters will do that as well, whether they're sponge filters or hang on the back filters. So I don't necessarily think all that extra volume is necessary that's provided by a canister filter. I think even in a six foot tank, if I had a six foot 125 and we do, even if I wasn't running air, I'd probably just run two hang on back filters just because they're so much cheaper and so much easier to maintain. Something else you might want to consider when it comes to a canister filter, there is a potential for them to leak. Now that's true that some other types of filters can leak as well, but usually with a canister filter, if they start to leak, it can cause a pretty decent sized mess. And in fact, that's what happened in our 50 gallon low boy that caused me to want to take a close look at the canister filter. Anyway, it developed a small leak that was inside the stand that wound up getting the rug a little bit wet. And so when I took that thing apart, I decided not to put it back in the tank. So that is something to consider if you've got floors that you care about, or you've got a rug under your tank. Now, some people get around that by making sure that they seal the canister filter in different ways, something you can look up on the internet. Uh, other people will put like a small plastic tray under the canister filter in case it develops a slow leak. You can see it there. But for me, I would prefer to have a filter that has a reduced chance of leaking in case I don't catch it right away. And for the most part, the hang on back filters that we use have never leaked on the floor with one exception, and that's a brand of filter we no longer use and haven't used in a couple of years. All right, everyone, I would love to hear from you. How do you feel about canister filters? Do you love them? Do you hate them? Leave that down in the comments section below. Again, if you'd like more information on hang on the back versus canister filters, check out this video. If you'd like more information about how we may be over filtering our fish tanks, check out this video down here. Really appreciate you being here. Appreciate you watching. Hope you have a good day.